BFI is such a great platform for small filmmakers, for yeah. big filmmakers. I mean, how important are they now in 2019 for these voices to be to be heard, even more voices than we had before? I think it's more important than ever before that we don't lose sight of uh, kind of the, the kind of homegrown talent who wants to tell personal stories or stories which affect culture as it is today, the diversity of British life, especially with us being so fractured like the rest of the world is as well. But certainly, you know, at a time when the bigger studios and the bigger investors are more risk averse than ever before and aren't putting money to those kind of movies, you know, we're not seeing, like, you know, a big studio wouldn't make a Howard and Maud these days. You know, not that that is a particular example of a cultural film, but you know what I mean? Quirky, weird, independent, individual voices need to be encouraged and supported. And in a way, the BFI has always pioneered that and probably does it now more than ever. So, yeah, I think it's crucial. The work they do and continue to do is, is essential. There's so many amazing films in the in the festival, but one I wanted to touch you, I know you're big into your comic books. Uh, have you seen, I saw it last night, have you seen The Joker yet, the new Joker movie? I'm not looking forward to it, to be honest with you. You're not? No, I'm really not looking forward to it, because I have the feeling it's one of those movies that kind of like encourages, uh, the um, impolite word for them is incels, but it seems to be there's a certain kind of subcurrent of not particularly well-educated young white men who seem to think the world has done them a great disservice. And the last thing we need is another hero figure, especially a kind of like psychopathic violent one, for them to rally around. So I, I'm not saying it's irresponsible filmmaking, because I haven't seen it yet, but I'm not looking forward to it. I mean, you know, I, I quite like Joaquin Phoenix. I don't think anyone quite likes his performances as much as he does, but I quite like seeing him on screen. But it's not a film that's exciting me or looking forward to it. It'd be interesting to see Warner Brothers finally doing a, a superhero type movie that doesn't suck, though. Yeah. I mean, Shazam was great. I loved Shazam. See, that's what I'd like to see. Oh, personally, as a superhero fan, I love films like that, which capture the innocence and the power and the kind of like real magic of those early superhero movies. Vic and Bob years ago once said to me, when we were talking about another TV show, dark is easy. Right? And it is. To make those kind of movies dark, and a, that's easy. You just make them unpleasant. But to make them light and fun and buoyant and work for a big audience, that's hard. And, and that's what I really admire. And I guess the new Scorsese is always exciting there, right? Really look for the new Scorsese. I mean, you say that. I mean, some of his films have been hit and miss over the years. Hugo, I didn't care for much. Uh, I didn't really care for the Wolf, the Wolf of Wall Street that much. I thought it had amazing moments in it. But overall, I thought it was messy and indulgent. Um, some great performances, though. However, I'm really looking for The Irishman. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Couldn't have a better cast. And I'm, I'm falling in love recently with Stephen Graham's work on screen. And once again, we're back to British talent there. What an amazing actor he is. And he's someone, really, who kind of manages to do those big movies without ever losing integrity. So I'm really looking forward to that. Fantastic. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time. Bingo. Pleasure, cheers. Think so. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? Yeah, it is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!